Hi, I'm Mike Patey, aviation enthusiast. I love to design, build, and race aircraft. I'm about ready to get the motor hung. I've got to build a motor mount. I've done, I don't know how many, a lot. So uh, I'm gonna get this set over here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what a motor mount starts as. If you look on my firewall here, <laughs> that's my motor mount. <laughs> Should make perfect sense to everybody. Anyway, so it's got all the different fittings I need to make, machine, how many, my count, how I'm tying it together. So um, I'm gonna go machine all these parts, get them in the computer. I got all my chromoly, my plate, uh, my uh, motor mounts. So once I get these parts machined, um, I'm gonna start welding this thing up. I'm super excited because I've got the last of the parts I need. I just finished making them to do the motor mount. I got some here, I got some already bolted on the firewall. I got the brackets for the turbine already bolted up. I got the brackets on the firewall bolted up and some of the connect and disconnect points is all I had left. So it's official. The turbine is going on the Wilga. I'm really excited because now I got no parts to build. I just got to do a lot of cutting, a lot of welding. I've got the plane leveled. I got the lasers out. I got everything completely ready to go. So pretty soon I'll have a turbine on the front. Now I have had people ask me what I'm gonna do about the firewall to make sure it can handle the turbine. Now a lot of times when I do an en engineering on making an adaption, I've done a bunch of motor changes. I've put eight cylinder supercharged motors on Lance Airs and all kinds of things. And a lot of time the weight we're worried about is in a heavy G turn pulling the, the motor down and off the firewall, putting the stress on the top, pulling it away and compression on the bottom. Now on this engine, I'm 135 pounds lighter with a Pratt & Whitney 700 horse motor than I was with a 300 horse Lycoming six cylinder. So the stresses on the firewall are actually less, even though I took into calculation the fact that the leverage arm moment is out a little bit further with the, le the length of a Pratt & Whitney motor is a little bit longer. I actually have less stress on the engine, so I'm not worried about the G's and the turning, the firewall can handle it. However, there's a different load on the airframe I had to calculate for, and so I went through it and I did need a little bit of change, but I went ahead and I added way more support than I needed. There were four contact points on the front of the firewall. I've designed my new motor mount, has seven contact points that all tie back into the tube mainframe of the Wilga. So I've got more than I need, but that's why I'd rather have it. That way, if I'm pulling all the thrust that this engine can make straight forward on this plane, I've got more than enough. So I'm really excited about it. And now it's time to go build it. All the hard work's done, engineering, pieces. Now I just got to weld. So back to work. We're getting close. We've got the plane leveled, use lasers to set the, the plane, the wings, the flight attitude. I flew it before I pulled it to get actual flight attitude. And then also uh, the angle of incident on the wing. Um, the nose has to be tipped down on the motor to the right to counteract the uh, P factor of the rotating mass. So I've got all that done and I'm super excited. So everything's set. Now I've got the front of the prop set exactly in line with the aircraft and the exact height it needs to be for the center of thrust line. However, I still need to lock the back in. Right now, the back can move around and the front stays fixed. So the way I'm gonna finish this is now that I've got the plane set and all lasered and set in place where it can't move, I've got the spinner of the prop set in the dead center. Now, you'd think that you might put the engine centered at the back, but you don't. You actually move it to this side and lift the back end up. So I'm actually clocking the engine by moving the back. So I'll set the lasers back up again and uh, calculate it's down and right and the thrust I want to correct it. And we can start welding it up a motor mount. <laughs> All right, I'm about going to call it a night before the sun comes up. I actually have no idea what time it is. But I uh, had a goal to get some parts ready. So this is the beginning of the motor mount. These are the contact points on the hook to the rubber isolators on the engine. I need three of them. 
they're done. That's where we'll start. I also got the, the uh, firewall mounts ready to go. So I got the engine side, the firewall side. Tomorrow morning, I'm gonna start connecting tubes. So I'm gonna go get some sleep, come back and hit it again, but we're getting close. Oil cool bracket. Now my motor mount's getting really close. Got most of the pipes done. It's hanging on its own. I'm down to some of the fine-tuned brackets. Down here, I gotta weld this up. This is my battery tray. Right up here, I got my oil cooler. See right here, I got this one ready to weld. That one I got fitted really nice. Um, this one not as nice. I don't like this gap right there. I can probably pinch it in and weld it, but I'm gonna sand it a little more. It doesn't wanna fall into place. <laughs> get a really nice tight fit. I'm almost there. So this motor mount I made more similar to uh, the King Air C90 motor mounts. Um, the last one I did like a Cheyenne and I really like the King Air mount better because it, well, and the King Air only has two bars. I have a third going up to a triangulated uh, up to my wing, but I have three bars. But what's nice is this is removable. Should be a little tight fit. And this comes off as the top. And now the motor can come straight out and up where my last plane mimicking a Cheyenne motor mount, you actually had to slide the motor out, relocate the chain, pick it up from a second pick and haul it out. So I'm really happy with this new motor mount. So it's a two piece, a top and a bottom carriage. The motor mount's done. It's 90% welded up. There's some places I can't get to because the engine's in the way. So it's time to pull it off. I'll finish burning out the rest and uh, we'll send it off, get it coated, then the motor goes back in permanently. So we're ready to lift it off right now. I think that's good. Then we're gonna unbolt it, take it off. Uh, hopefully, hopefully I got this balanced or this motor's gonna tip on me. Looks good. Yeah. Squeeze. There we go. All right. We're going to let this motor just hang out over here for a couple days while we get the motor mount coated. I think we're good there. Next time it goes in, it stays. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is a re really good day. The top of the motor mount and the lower cradle, battery tray. I'm going to get to the corners I couldn't get before and uh, get it all welded out and then get it coated. So, man, it feels good to get this far along. Way excited. <laughs> it's a good day. All right, so I just started dragging these out. You know, I'm about ready to knock one out of the side of the truck. So I got two parts here. This is the top section of my motor mount is now painted, ready to go on. And uh, the rest of the motor mount. So the best part of today is when this motor mount goes on and the engine goes in it, it stays. <laughs> so much of this build and doing a motor mount, you're pulling the engine out, putting it on, pulling it out to get to welds, building gussets, 
all that nonsense. Now that it's painted, I'm gonna hang the PT-6 and it stays in until the day I start it and fly it. So I'm way excited. So let's get this in the airplane. <laughs>